the research implications and research recommendations are two closely related but distinctly different concepts that often trip students up. In this video, we'll unpack both of them using plain language and loads of examples so that you can approach your research project with confidence. Let's do it. Hey, my name's Emma, and today we're gonna explore two important components of any dissertation or thesis, the research implications and recommendations. To get the most from this video, be sure to grab a copy of our tried and tested free dissertation template. You can access that as well as loads of other free resources over on the Grad Coach blog. The link for that is down in the description. All right, so let's start by explaining what exactly the implications and recommendations are. At the simplest level, research implications refer to the possible effects or outcomes of a study's findings. More specifically, they answer the question, what do these findings mean? In other words, the implication section is where you discuss the broader impact of your study's findings on theory, practice, and future research. This discussion leads us to the recommendations section, which is where you'll propose specific actions based on your study's findings and answer the question, what should be done next? In other words, the recommendations are practical steps that stakeholders can take to address the issues identified by your study. In a nutshell then, the research implications discuss the broader impact and significance of a study's findings, while the recommendations provide the specific actions to take based on those findings. To make this all a little more tangible, let's look at one or two examples. So let's assume that your study finds that interactive learning methods significantly improve student engagement compared to traditional lectures. In this case, one of your recommendations could be that schools incorporate more interactive learning techniques into their curriculums to enhance student engagement. Similarly, if your study finds that patients who receive personalized care plans have better health outcomes than those with standard care plans, one of your recommendations might be that healthcare providers develop and implement personalized care plans for their patients. Now, these are very simplistic examples, but they demonstrate the difference and connection between the research implications and the recommendations. Simply put, the implications are about the impact, while the recommendations are about the proposed actions. All right, so now that we've defined our terms, let's dig a little deeper into the research implications, specifically the different types of implications that exist. Broadly speaking, implications can be divided into three categories, theoretical implications, practical implications, and implications for future research. Theoretical implications relate to how your study's findings contribute to or challenge existing theories. For example, if a study on social behavior uncovers new patterns, it might suggest that modifications to current psychological theories are necessary. Practical implications, on the other hand, focus on how your study's findings can be applied in real-world settings. For example, if your study demonstrated the effectiveness of a new teaching method, this would imply that educators should consider adopting this method to improve learning outcomes. Practical implications can also involve policy reconsiderations. For example, if a study reveals significant health benefits from a particular diet, an implication might be that public health guidelines be re-evaluated. Last but not least, there are the implications for future research. As the name suggests, this category of implications highlights the research gaps or new questions raised by your study. For example, if your study finds mixed results regarding a relationship between two variables, it might imply the need for further investigation to clarify these findings. If you'd like to learn more about research gaps, we've got a dedicated explainer video covering just that. The link for it is in the description. To recap then, the three types of implications are the theoretical, the practical, 
and the implications on future research. Regardless of the category, these implications feed into and shape the recommendations, laying the foundation for the specific actions you'll propose in that section. All right, now that we've laid the foundation, let's talk about how to write up the implications and recommendations section. Let's start with the where before digging into the how. Typically, the implications will feature in the discussion section of your document, while the recommendations will be located in the conclusion. That said, layouts can vary between disciplines and institutions, so be sure to check with your university for what their preferences are. For the implications section, a common approach is to structure the write-up based on the three categories we looked at earlier, theoretical, practical, and future research implications. In practical terms, this discussion will usually follow a fairly formulaic sentence structure. For example, this research provides new insights into theoretical aspect, indicating that this study raises several questions that warrant further investigation, such as... Moving on to the recommendation section, you could again structure your recommendations using the three categories. Alternatively, you could structure the discussion per stakeholder group. For example, policymakers, organizations, researchers, etc. Again, you'll likely use a fairly formulaic sentence structure for this section. Here are some examples for your inspiration. Based on the findings, specific group should consider adopting new method. To improve, researchers should consider examining specific variable to build on the current study's findings. Remember, you can grab a copy of our tried and tested templates for both the discussion and conclusion sections over on the Grad Coach blog. You can find the links to those as well as loads of other free resources down in the description. All right, we have covered quite a bit of ground here, so let's quickly recap. Research implications refer to the possible effects or outcomes of a study's findings. They answer the question, what do these findings mean? The recommendation section, on the other hand, is where you'll propose specific actions based on your study's findings. This is where you'll answer the question, what should be done next? When it comes to writing up, you can structure your implication section based on the three overarching categories, theoretical, practical, and future research implications. You can carry this structure through to the recommendations as well, or you can group your recommendations by stakeholder. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons to help other students discover this content. Check out the links in the description for more freebies. And be sure to watch this video next, and I will see you there.